ground control to and towards the tunnel. end of like when I when I started like not making videos anymore ground um, control to major that tunnel. was more so of a time where I was just kind of like going through things and a lot of people take your protein talk shit <laughs> and they have no idea with like and I'm not trying to cry I don't want to cry if I do it's fine to but I've been trying not to cry for a while because I've been crying for a while and I'm just tired of it but um, I just feel like nobody I'm going to take the comments away because I don't want to look at the comments right now. Hold on. Um, all right. So nobody has been like able to hear me. Um, they kind of put me in a category. It's crazy. Um, I made a video like this before, like, <laughs> like a year ago, and it was just too much. And I made it private because I, I feel like I've been trying to explain things to people and nobody knows what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm crazy. I don't take care of my kids. I left um, like my hair is gone and I look like I'm just fucking nuts. And that's actually not the case. It's like the opposite. I am too aware of what's going on and um that that's getting me in trouble because i already know that and it's funny because i used to um like sometimes you'll hear people kind of like lose it a little bit and say they feel like they're being watched they feel like they're being stalked they feel like they're like these government ops, like just watching and monitoring and literally creating strategy to um, to get rid of certain people who speak up about certain things in a community, especially when it comes to um, like quantum based technology based government based stuff um, that may be a little too advanced for like the general public to really get into. Um, but. I've always been trying to say that we're just in a part or a point of life where we have to listen to what's actually happening. So sometimes I feel like I'm making too much sense in a world that is just programmed to not even hear it, almost like a dog whistle, you know, where you blow the whistle and... Only the dog can hear the whistle. Um, no one can hear it. So I feel like I'm operating on that level of frequency. And I feel like it's ruining everything for me uh, because I can sense these things. Um, and I'm not even going to talk in detail about what they are because I feel like I've been making enough videos and trying to explain that. I'm just going more so in a personal point of my life because it's literally like destroying everything. And I feel like there's like a group of people that are enjoying this because um, one thing that I haven't expressed, which I feel like I expressed before, but I felt intimidated. So I kind of like just took all of those videos down as well is I was brought into a cult and I didn't know that I was, I didn't know that I was eventually being programmed and recruited into a cult. So I, I'd never been a part of a cult before or anything like that, but I feel like, I eventually ended up in that and now it's like it feels like it's impossible to get out of it. So I feel the programming, the constant trauma of the programming constantly triggering me to tell me what it is that my role is in this world. Um, and it's not that anymore. Um, it just feels like even like this, my hair right now, I feel like I'm in a fucking military or like I've been recruited for some like special op shit that I'm not even aware of, but there's a part of me that does remember. Um, there are dreams that I have where I know that I have, I've been recruited to, to uh, 
whatever ability that I have, whatever knack that I have to kind of jump into the things that a lot of people don't see, kind of like experimentation. It feels like for these past two years, um, I've been experimented on um, mentally, put through trials like a fucking lab rat, um, put through trials of pressure, trials of constant traumas just to see what happens and see what these results are. And I know a lot of it has to do with um, human trafficking. A lot of it has to do with uh, duplicating uh, souls. People think I'm crazy for saying that shit, but it's not, it's, it's, it's a way, it's a certain kind of way you can use technology and using the mind to get people to agree to certain things to do literally duplicate somebody's life. So it's almost like a hive in a sense of um, when you choose a person or two or three to like just be a hive like leader or mother, right, to a bunch of people who um, who get to live their lives based upon what is produced from that hive person. I feel like I was chosen when I did not ask for this, but I was chosen to be this hive thing. And um, so it's almost like I, to try to explain it in a way, it feels like my life is not mine. I'm literally led to, uh, through the traumas, through the traumas, I'm led to, uh, to, kind of like simulate experiences thinking that I'm creating my own life or manifesting my own stuff when in reality I'm doing it so that other people can duplicate that experience and actually have the experience whether it be like I I, like whatever I'm trying to create I'm creating for others to have that's what like hive mother is it's kind of like a sacrifice Um, Even when you think about the queen bee, the queen bee literally sits there and she has, she lays eggs every day, right? Uh, She doesn't have a life. And the thing about that is this is not, there's so much more to me than just simulating um, experiences for others to have. And I feel like I was pulled into a space to be that just because of what I spoke about, how I spoke about it, um, what my presence was. So my beauty was uh, the beauty part of me, like the hair and everything. Eventually, it was programmed within me to get rid of that, um, to to cover myself up, almost like like I kept saying or kept using the term global religion, um, to 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 be poor and homeless and constantly just moving around and and not having a place to just settle in. So I've been like, and I don't, I don't like, um, I don't like at all because my pride is in that space. Cause I feel like I'm, I'm way too valuable to whatever space that I'm in to beg for money, to ask for money, to ask for people for donations or anything like that. I'm not, I don't constantly do that because I don't, that's not me. I'm not, I don't scam people. I don't fraud people out of money. Everything that I've done to make money has been a even exchange in that. Um, but like I'm at a point where I feel like I'm literally being blocked from making money. Um, I've seen it even in the technologies I, to the point where I have and I know that these technologies exist. Um, the hacking of phones and programs and I've had to get a new phone because of stuff like this. Um I, I literally gave somebody my number. I tested something because I felt like something was off. I told them to text me in front of my face because I felt like I wasn't getting messages. I felt like there have been blockers to my uh, financial accounts. Um, I told them to text me. I did not receive the text. And it was seen right there. And they were just like, wow, like I text you right in front of your face. You, you're not getting a message. Um, happened with a few other people as well. And I said, I'm literally being blocked from even receiving uh, for sending out messages to people, receiving messages from people, uh, fraudulent uh, uh, claims on my bank account where Chase doesn't even have any clue where these these uh, uh, these uh, 
attempts to use my my accounts uh, are coming from at all. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's the weirdest thing. So it just feels like even when I'm sending out emails for business, there are some blockers on that to where certain parts of my email list, maybe only two to three people receive the email and then the rest of the few thousand, they don't. That's how crazy it is or that's how much I feel blocked based upon just where my placement has been in this quote unquote cult. <laughs> um, and it's kind of like, you can't get out. You can't be if the only thing, you know, it, it's like this, 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 um, this, this society of some sort has been trying to um, break me down so that I don't look great. I don't feel great. I'm crying all the time. I'm looking for a home. I have no friends. My, my family, uh, uh, I can't even see my kids literally for no reason. Uh, it, there literally is no reason for it. And I can't even explain that. Um, so I have to just do FaceTime and shit like that. And I'm just like, why am I in this position in my life right now where I'm blocked from everything, from everyone? Um, and it's almost like this this program is pushing me to the edge to at least want to drive me to suicide, to kill myself, <laughs> to 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 eventually uh give in to things that I don't want to do for money. I'm not a fucking like whore or prostitute in that sense where I don't I'm not around here sleeping with men to like stay at places or make money or anything like that. I can do that. It's an option, but I don't want to. <laughs> so I'm not like doing things that are going against my integrity to like sustain because I feel like I deserve the essentials. I deserve a home. I deserve a car. I deserve to be able to travel to see my children. I deserve to have a thriving career that I know that I work hard at behind the scenes, but nothing ever goes through. Nothing is ever to be completed. Um, and I and I noticed the patterns. And another thing is um, uh, another thing is you know I I was trying to make this video the other day. And that's also another thing when I do certain things or make certain videos, it just feels like um, like I, I get like afraid to keep it up. You know, there's a trauma in me that triggers in me to where I feel like I can't even have the video up because I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. Um, so it just it just feels like, you know, I spoke about my sons having autism um, they see the world in different ways. Uh, I feel like I've picked that up. Um, I, I haven't been officially diagnosed in that sense, but I see the world in a way that most people don't. And it's bothersome to me because nobody, there's a whole world out there that exists that the the normal society does not give credit to so it's like these types of beings have to deal with frequencies that don't match at all there are no options for people like us that um that need to express ourselves in a way that is not seen as being disabled or you belong in a mental institution or anything like that so that's also mixed with a lot of the sensory issues that i'm having so I like to call it being rubbed the wrong way, <laughs> you know, with certain frequencies and tones that I hear, vo the, the people's voices, uh, uh, music and so on. There's there's a frequency that I pick up on. Um, and I don't know, I, I guess I'm just here to just express that I am tired of being in a position that I don't belong to. I don't I don't deserve to be in. Um, I try to keep myself up. You know, uh, I decided to grow my hair out finally, um, decided to say, you know what? I know that I'm trying to get back into the entrepreneurship, lost my job because of bullshit, absolute bullshit, being overqualified um, and doing my job. And and that is why I got fired, which doesn't make sense. So and everything in my dimension is not logical for me to be in a position that I'm in. So it's very um it, it, it's a bunch of red flags for me. And I don't know what else to say or how else to express. And I have a platform. I'm here to like just express this and see, I don't know if there's any resources um, because I don't, I don't know where else to go, what else to do at this point. I should not be wandering the streets. 
I'm not out in the streets, but I don't, I shouldn't have to be like left because I'm trying to finish a book. I can't even settle into a place for more than two to three weeks um, without like being disrupted in my creativity. I'm trying to get these uh, classes going again. I need a place to rest and to settle in to prepare for these things, to start doing these things again. Uh, I just saw, I, I even decided to start getting into beauty again, um, empowerment, growing my hair out. There's a lot of trauma connected to my hair right now because I feel like I, this is, when I look at my hair, I look at, I feel like a cancer patient. I feel like that's even like a thing, you know, trying to eventually get me sick. Uh, like I have cancer. So it, it, being in a military, being an experiment, uh, experimental experimental brain shit uh yet i still put on makeup and i still wear cute clothes and i still like go out every now and then to have a social life and it feels like, like whatever this cult is does not want me to do that and it feels like a punishment it's like a overly religious holy thing to these cults that worship the feminine in a way of the feminine has to um has to like there's a certain divine feminine that they claim when we talk about divine femininity a certain divine feminine that has to has these duties as mother to just give and give and give and nurture through nature and get nothing back for it nothing because nature is nothing or mother is nothing she's just a portal or a door and that's it and when you choose when you're chosen by this fucking cult that is your job so you can't have a boyfriend, you can't go out for drinks, you can't look a certain way, you can't wear lipstick, you can't have hair. Um, so it's it just, it, and there's an overlapping programming over time that leads you into that space, even though you don't even know that that's your path that others are choosing for you through this hyper level of programming. And it's just like, there's this other part of the feminine uh, it's almost like the Mary and the Magdalene. So they're separated within one woman. So I hold everything. I hold the Mary. I hold the Magdalene. I hold the upper and the lower, the angelic and the demonic in one body. And what these religious cults, or at least the cult that I am talking about, is they separate through the programming. Because I, I remember as I go back in the last two years, what this felt like and what was happening um, so I've been pulled apart and chosen to be a Mary. However, a lot of my essence is Magdalene, a lot of like the, you know, but that's chosen for a specific type of girl, girl, not a woman, right? So if you choose to be mature as a woman, you're, you, you have to take the role of zero of nothingness. When you choose to be the girl who like listens and follows and she's sexual in her nature, right? she gets to have that role. So she gets the role of the quote unquote prostitute, but the one that gets all of the, the stuff, she gets the money, she gets the, the, the car, she gets the home, she gets to have these experiences that are fun because she's a loving girl that is for that role. So it's all, and, and I'm just like, I have all of that. And it doesn't have to be quote unquote prostitution in that sense. It's because that's even a, a lie in the religion. It's more so of just being able to go back and forth from being the nurturer to the sensual girl that comes back to being the nurturer and to go back and forth in that. And it feels like the, the quote unquote masculine has an issue with that, with women who know how to go in and out of their uh, mature selves to their childlike innocent selves, to their sexual nature, to their nurturing nature. And they're constantly just trying to rip us apart to just choose the role, mother or girl, mother or girl. Mother has to be controlled. Girl has to stay a girl or else she'll turn into mother. And that's a punishment. That's the fucking sacrifice. So because I choose to like not want to choose between any of that within myself, the, the, the hyper masculine in this particular cult punishes the woman who just wants to be a woman. And the men, it's almost like there's this... Um, and I have a very uh, strong divine masculine sense in me. That's also another threat to a lot of them. It's just like, how dare you be 
uh, balance in your masculine and feminine and embrace all of that other beauty within you in one person, you're being selfish. You have to give to all of these sectors of life because we have to choose a role. We have to choose a role. And I don't believe in that. That's not my religion. So why do I feel like I'm being placed in these, these situations ever since I've been in, involved in specific types of programming? Which again, I'm not gonna speak on specifically in detail because I'm not here to defame anyone. Um, but it's been hard to like, just get back to being myself. You know, I look at old pictures, I look at old videos, I can't recognize myself anymore. I'm too hyper aware of the constant traumas every day and the constant, you know, it, the, the, the lessons that need to be learned for the day. Uh, you have to struggle to learn the lesson. It's just like, well, if I learn the lesson, let me enjoy the result of that. Don't put me through another struggle um, just to teach me another fucking lesson, you know? So I'm not, I'm not here for that. And I just woke up and I, I, I had to take a nap because I've just been feeling tired because I feel like my spirit has just been getting really exhausted. Like I know what it feels like to even want to die, to just say, I just give up and I'm not even suicidal. But I feel like I know what it feels like to want to just give up and just say, fuck it. There's nowhere else to go. There's nobody who hears me. There, there's nobody who believes in what I'm saying. So what am I here for? What am I really here for? Um, and that's that's how I've been feeling. And I'm just like, shit, if I'm getting to this point, they have clearly been successful in pushing me to a certain point of an edge almost like an initiation of some sort. I don't know, but I'm tired of it and I'm ready to like move on and get my life back or else I die. You know what I mean? That's like one or the other. Um, so I just feel like this, you know, I always say when the soul makes a decision not to want to be here anymore, the body starts to prepare for that soul to not be here because the soul is agreeing, the soul is exhausted. So when there's an exhaustion, the body automatically creates a scenario of sickness or something like a cancer to develop in the body because the soul constantly just wants to sleep. So I know what that feels like of separation from the soul and the body over time. And I'm just like, this is what preparing for death feels like. So then there's another part of me that's just like, no, make this video or have the willpower to just fucking like reach out to people and be honest about what's happening, no matter how crazy you look or whatever. So I just, I just, I'm on here literally trying to like at a crossroads, trying to figure out like what I, what my next steps are. Um, and I'm going to look in the chat just for a second. Um, just to, just to see, you know, what you guys are saying, but luckily I've had some people that have been here to like help you know, move along, like move me along within my situation. But it feels like it's I'm going around in like circles instead of like a pattern that brings me out of a loop. So it's just a constant loop. So it doesn't even feel like help. It feels like a sustainment of the same thing. Uh, and that's what I'm starting to see. So I, you know, I, I have my Cash App and Venmo. I'll put my PayPal link below. Um, it's at Taryn Guy or dollar sign Taryn Guy. I'm just asking for help, um, literally, so that I can take my next step to like being able to at least stay in a place for a little while, get a job. I have a couple of interviews again. Um, still follow through on my classes and go back into the beauty space and bringing something out of this trauma um, and something that makes sense. So I know how to create things that out of the, the struggle, but at the same time, I just, I just need a break. <laughs> you know, I need a break because I feel like I've been contributing to people's betterment in their lives for over 10 years. Um, helping people like feel better about themselves, teaching people about things or opening up their minds and their spirits to certain things. So I'm just here to just say, hey, like, can I get a chance to actually get through a transition of making it through to the next part of my life? You know, because again, nobody knows like the serious trauma that comes with being a part of something that you didn't know you signed up for. Um, 
So that's all I'm saying. So any any help and resources, even links, um, I'll put my email in the description of, um, you know, I don't I don't mind staying in a shelter either. Like I've I've been homeless when I've been homeless with my mom when I was a teenager. I know what it feels like to be in a shelter. Nobody wants to be in a shelter, but I'm not afraid to literally walk up to a fucking shelter somewhere and just say I need help. So I'm I'm in the California area. I'm in San Diego right now. I'm trying to see if I can do LA um, just because of frequency, um, even heading back to the East, but I need a ticket to go back because I know I can make it in New York. I know people there. Uh, my children are on the East Coast as well, but I just need assistance with getting to that next step because I am running out of time. I am running out of money <laughs> and I don't want to continuously depend on people and intruding on their space when they're trying to get themselves together as well. So I'm not that person to like just intrude and beg or constantly just ask in that sense and not doing anything with my life. So that that's what I'm here for. Um, I'm just like, I got to put my pride aside. This is the second video that I've made, um, like this. And the first video did help. It helped with like a few Airbnbs and stuff like that. But now that I've, now that I'm like five months in the, and I'm, I know like what the patterns are. I know with the plan, like what my next steps are to like, get what I need um so I, I'm gonna look in the in the and thank you guys for like just hearing me out I've seen a couple of uh contributions to the cash app so thank you <laughs> for those of you who are just um donating um let me look in the chat now and if you have any questions you know feel free to ask um me personally because I know there have been people who have been worried about me. Uh, again, they're just like, what is going on with her? Is she okay? Um, you know, and the answer is no. <laughs> no, I'm not okay, but I'm trying. <laughs> um, uh, she needs assistance. Y yeah, of course, the financial assistance hel uh, helps. Um but I, I, I'm no, I need a plan, you know, so my, my part is to plan, like, where am I going? How long do I need to stay? Uh, I have a couple of interviews. If I get one of the jobs, I know that I'll be able to uh, sustain, right, and be able to, like, at least save up to sustain myself. I, it really is just getting a job and being able to have a place. There's a lot of month to months here. Um, so in doing that, I, I'll be able to do that. I just am literally in between jobs and I don't have a, I don't have a place to live right now. So this, this space right here just has to, it has to go. Um, thank you for the super chats as well. Um, I know the super chats is, it's kind of like a, a, a cumulative thing. So um, again, the cash app and Venmo uh, are in the description. Let me look back in. Uh, I'm in, I'm in Texas, uh, born and raised in Cali. I would never go back to live there. Energy is low vibrational. I've noticed it, you know, it's very, um, where I am, it's very military heavy. Um, so there's very little civilians and a lot of military here. Um, so I know just being in a military space is just within itself. I'm already like on the radar for stuff. Um, I know what it feels like to be watched. So I'm not, I, and I'm just here to say, like, I'm just trying to go back into the creative space. I don't want to sit on here making videos about the government, making videos about, you know, the molecular structures of things that people don't know what to deal with or how to deal with these things. I'm done with those videos. So whatever is like, whatever government sector is kind of like trying to stop me from doing that, I'm already done with it even though I'm not afraid to express certain things, but I'm done with it. I'm ready to go back into creative spaces. I need to finish writing. I need to get into a space back into beauty again. Um, so even if there are people in the beauty space or if there's any kind of like, uh, and I'm speaking to the women out there, self-esteem, trauma-based self-esteem. That's really kind of like the theme because there's beauty everywhere, but trauma-based. I have this... Uh, this piercing here, um, this dermal piercing, 
this represents me not wanting to literally cry anymore. So it always reminds me to stay strong and not to cry. So this is, represents my last tear. You know what I mean? So it's stuff like that in beauty that I have to do to make myself feel better just for going through the stuff that I'm dealing with um, just on a traumatic level. Trauma bonding, yes, but trauma bonding without perpetuating the same trauma. So it's really just to, just to feel better. Um, a lot of it is mental attack. A lot of it is uh, self. A lot of it is insecurities that are just amplified. Um, so we're in a space now again. When I talked about like what the technologies are doing to the to the mind, the nanotechnologies inside of the body are responding to the environment and literally changing the eyesight of how we see our world. So everyone's seeing something different. And this is not new, but it's amplified now because of the environment right now. So it's kind of like a bird box situation, as, as I said before, where you're it, a lot of people are locked in an algorithm or a box that they can't get out of, um, kind of like a time cube of some sort where they can't get out of it. So all you see is what you see and what that means to you is what the reality is. This is simple 101 manifestation of the world, but it was there was a relief back then. There was a time to breathe in dealing with how we see ourselves. Uh, but now it's just, it's constant, it's immediate, it's quantum, quantum is immediate. So it, it it's, it's immediate triggers and a lot of people are dealing with a lot of mental health issues and no one, I've seen people's looks change. I've changed. I lost so much weight. People thought I was on drugs. I don't do drugs. I don't do none of that. People thought I looked like I was on crack or some shit. Like I really looked like I was getting sick, losing weight. I was looking at pictures of myself, videos that I made private. I was so skinny. And I just said, what happened to, what happened? And I was literally in a different dimension of some sort i wasn't here i wasn't present i was somewhere else listening to command on things that i did not want to do things that i did not want to necessarily say or get involved in um so that it was just i'm getting back i feel healthy again i feel back to myself but resources are needed yeah people are saying i thought something was wrong but then people are people nowadays are cruel as well so when they see you going through things there's like oh she's a fucking you know they'll make things up and and say things and make th make it even worse you know um that harassment or or level of bullying doesn't feel good you know so i completely stopped following people on instagram and i stopped looking at youtube videos all of my favorite uh people that I used to watch, I don't watch anymore. And I'm like, I need to get back into the groove of just the community and like watching videos again to see what people are talking about. I've literally just been isolated because I've been afraid of being triggered by everything. And I'm just tired of living my life like that. So it feels like I've literally just been a part of some kind of psyop that I'm, I'm escaping. I'm going to say that I'm escaping. Um, and thank you guys for contributing or helping um, with whatever you can. Uh, someone says she's at a stage of distrust and paranoia. Take a break and rest your mind, honey love. Yes, I, you're right about that, though. I, and I, I've been paranoid. Uh, I, I can't even explain it and I don't even want to try, but living in a state of paranoia that's what exhausts the soul if i feel old i feel really old from my age right now um i feel older than i look i feel like i've been living for like a couple of thousand years just in the past two years um two years equal equivalent to two thousand years um and i'm tired and i'm not lazy but i'm tired <laughs> uh it's a constant processing of a lot of information um you know and a part of us the brain processes information and i feel like they say that we use less than 10 percent of our brains i feel like i've been in a space where uh maybe five percent or maybe another 10 percent has opened up and it's just so i'm so sensitive to what's around me because of that um and that's dangerous because you don't want to place 
that high level of opening up to, uh, you know, around in an environment for people who are not ready for that level of exposure. So I understand the needing to keep things private or transforming into creative, but for my personal sanity, I, I need an outlet. Um, <laughs> and th thank you guys again. Um, I'm just gonna read a couple of comments. Uh, Damn, a lot of conscious people I've followed from 2013 to 2017 going through some heavy stuff. And again, I haven't been in the community, so I'm, I haven't checked in on like my fellows mm -hmm. who have been, uh, you know, who, who I used to watch uh, and make videos with as well. Um, Miss Taryn, your spirit may be tired. I said my spirit is tired, but I'm, I, I don't, I'm not going to choose to die. Um, so sometimes when your back is against the wall, the only thing is when you get that space is to leave the wall, not to stay and live there, you know? Um, and that's the only thing. Um, so yeah, uh, someone said Pro gang stalking simulation. There is a simulated, and I'll, I'll conclude here. Um, there is a simulated... Um, uh, gang stalking, but I've, I don't, I've learned how to ignore those things. Um, literally when I would see it's, it's literally, it's just about the subconscious mind trying to make sense of something that is, uh, that is familiar. And usually that familiarity is trauma based, something that makes you feel bad instead of feeling good. Uh, that's what, most people's lives and that's usually what most people feel if gang stalking is a part of their reality so certain people are targeted for that i do feel or at least felt that i definitely was targeted for gang stalking i've seen it i've, I've seen it. the cult that i'm talking about the hive that i'm speaking of they're breaking down that hive is completely breaking down it is no longer powerful over my life anymore um, so I am just here to just break out of that shell and just to come back um, truly uh, successful in everything that I do and making a difference in a different kind of way because of it, you know, and sometimes these these controlling cults, they they want you to thank them for putting you through certain traumas because if it weren't for these traumas you wouldn't be where you are so let's say someone becomes super successful because of the trauma they literally they feel like they have stakes in your success because they put you through the trauma and that's almost like saying thank you for trying to kill me uh but i got through it because i i people have to survive they have to try to figure things out life doesn't always have to be a constant obstacle course so yes it is a part of the journey to be attacked it is a part of the journey to 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 go through the struggle but it is not a sustainable life so i i have at the point of my life i have every right to to be able to be in touch with my uh a simple essentials such as a home a car a space, a job, baseline, basic. There are people out there who have these things and they are shitty, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but sometimes we live in a world that supports the shitty people and just wants to just totally do the opposite with people who have something to contribute. But I I'm going to stop here. Um, <laughs> someone said, get back to Jesus. You know what? J I have been Jesus. And that's the problem. I told you, you guys, Jesus comes back and says, I'm tired of taking your shit. I need to get through my own because I have my own being. The the whole, any kind of religious that believe, religion that believes fully in the sacrifice in that way, there are many ways to sacrifice, but in the way of, of it's an innocence or an innocent being that is usually, I call it, and I don't want to call out, I'm not even going to call out celebrity names in that sense, but it is an innocence that is usually taken advantage of and is super powerful in their abilities to alchemize super magnet, 
super empath, uh, uh, empath. A Jesus being is a super empath, someone that is compassionate, true, um, innocent in their essence, and that can automatically wash your sins for you just from being around them. And the thing is, eventually Jesus gets Jesus gets heavy. Jesus gets heavy with all the stuff, whether male or female. And when Jesus gets heavy, Jesus has to continue being who he or she is. So Jesus eventually turns into an entity that wants to clear itself. So then where does all the stuff go? It has to go somewhere. So then that's the war. It's like, wait, Jesus, you know, I gave you my sins. What did, well, what do you think Jesus did with your sin? Jesus held it. Now it's time for Jesus to let it go. You Maybe you have to take it back. Maybe it has to transform into something. But I'm not Jesus anymore. I'm tired of being married, Jesus. I want to be, uh, I just want to be me. <laughs> and whatever that is, I don't want to play a role. I am all things. I am everything. And I think that's the new quote unquote anti-religion. It's just like, I can do what I want. It's a time to say we are individualistic. I want to do what I want. If you need me to be a Jesus, there are people being Jesuses for me right now. They are contributing. I'm staying at someone's home, you know, is letting me stay here for a few days just because I could like for me to settle in. That is a Jesus right there for me. But we, the way that we do is we, we, there's a reciprocity with that though. We don't just dump on people and leave. There's, there has to be an exchange. So we are all heroes for people. And then sometimes we turn into villains. tree gets deep rooted and grows if you try to bend the limb it'll break mm -hmm. and so you're looking at these baby boomers and uh they've been the coding and program is so embedded in them for so many de uh, for so many uh, years uh that it's it's you know they've become rooted trees they've grown and they've you know got stiff bark and you can't yeah. really break bend those limbs they'll just snap mm -hmm. and a lot of them aren't ready for that information so you have to just you know when i tell people who always ask me how do i get my family members to wake up and how do i I said, you just be the light. You just do what you do. Mm. Don't put pressure on them. Every now and then you may drop a gentle seed and that's about it. And just let them look at your life and how you're moving. Eventually they may start to ask some questions. Right. And then you
then you can answer the question and walk away. Don't go too deep again. Just a little bit of baby steps, a little bit at a time. Some of them will come along. Some of them may not. Just be happy yeah. you know, that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're finding yourself. Mm -hmm. And then others will also see how you're moving and how you're living through this matrix. And then they will then begin to ask you questions. And some people will jump right on in with you, full yeah. blown. Some people will take time. Yeah. It's a gradual process, but you, like you say, right. you can't you can't overdo it. Everybody's mm -hmm. in their own game. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's by right. Example, just lead by example. Yeah. If it's not for you, it's not for you. If it's you know right, like, and you and you know them by their fruit. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> right. It's like we, do we miss that message? Like you know people by their fruit, mm -hmm. meaning their actions yep. show you who they are. Exactly. So that exactly. whole I'm woke because you so here it is. Say. Let's go back. I was about to go in full into <laughs> that, which is okay, you got the information, you got all this knowledge. Yeah. Neo when he went, he got into the chair, mm -hmm. got the thing plugged into him, and yo, he was sitting there for hours just downloading information, right? Yeah. Yep. And he said and he told Morpheus, I know Kung Fu. Morpheus said what? <laughs> show me. Right. Show me. Right. Oh, right. you you know, mm -hmm. show, show me. me. Exactly. Right. It's the action that proves it. Right? So he right. went in that simulation again to show him he knew Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. And what did Morpheus do? He whipped his ass. Yep. yep. Beat him yep. down. <laughs> <laughs> he beat him down. He's, and, he, and he's training him the whole way. Yeah, you learn some information, mm -hmm. but you, you can't apply it. Until you apply that yeah. information, it's not real. It's exactly. not in this realm. It doesn't exist. It just exists in your mind. Yes. Until you apply it. Absolutely. That happens to me all the time. People come to church.